the jagged edges. But she is something quite different. She is beautiful and strange. And very, very rare. I'm going to be honest with you. I love me a good post-apocalyptic movie. I don't know why, but just something about them does something for me. But how did this one turn out? Let's see. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Mortal Engines. I really do appreciate it. I remember when this teaser trailer for this film came out about a year ago, I was like, whoa, wow. I also said, why they're marketing this so early? But, you know, hey, that is what I said. But what this is about Mortal Engines, it is based on a novel by Philip Reeve where it's a post-apocalyptic world where the world is destroyed. A man has destroyed everything like they always do. And cities are not cities that used to be. You got cities on sea, you have cities in the air, and then you have cities on land that actually can move on wheels. And if you've never read the book or seen the trailer, if I try to describe this to you, you might be like, you know, what the hell? Like cities on wheels? No, there really are cities on wheels in this movie. And these cities are huge. And that's one of the best things I like about this movie is just the scale. And they did a great job there. Christian Rivers um, is the director of this film. This is actually his first, uh, when you look at his filmography, this is actually his uh, one of like his first real uh, full feature. He did a couple of short films, but this is his first full length feature. And I will say that he did a great job uh, with setting up the scale. I mean, we know how big human beings are, human beings, human beings are. And then the, the way that they, they the way that they use that standing next to a fixture or the tracks that made the uh, wheels move, not the wheels move, but the cities move throughout the land uh, in the film. It, it was great. It was pretty breathtaking. I don't know how they did it. There was a few scenes where the green screen, the blue screen wasn't the crispest, but it isn't anything that I want to gripe about too much. But, you know, the scale is something that uh, did blow me away. Also, just the design of the film and the color palette. I did love the cinematography. I did love the... Um, the design of some of the creatures, which I don't want to spoil here. Uh, I may not have liked their characters uh, per se, but you know, their design is something that I really did appreciate. Um, I also like how this film takes place like a thousand years in the future or maybe a little bit longer than we are now. And I like the perspective of how they perceive the world from back in the past, how they perceive today's world. It was hilarious. Um, it, it, it put, it put a lot of things in perspective. Um, some people may call it a little preachy. I, I don't think so, but there was nice to America and pop culture and things that we know today. Um, as far as technology is concerned too, how, you know, a lot of us are obsessed with cell phones and devices and, and tablets and things like that. They had these little jabs and things like that. You know, about the positive things that we do in society today, but also the negative things and, you know, how we can learn on those. Now, this is also still a reflection of man in general, because even though when the world is destroyed, you still have these stupid people that are just willfully dense and you can't convince them of anything. They still, you know, want to uh, maintain superiority, supremacy over others. Um, you know, they think that they're better than you because of this, because of that. I mean, it's just ridiculous. There was, and this is film kind of an allegory in a sense, um, to the white supremacist ideology to where, you know, we're better than you no matter what, and we're going to dominate you no matter what. And, um, I like, you know, th th that was one of the main villains, uh, motivations in this film. And they gave him, a um, a, a sub motivation as well. So he has some layers to him, and I'm talking about Hugo Weaving. So that was great too. And I did love his character. He was one of my favorite in this movie just because he was just so sick, you know, um, and just disturbed. For all the other characters in this film, they were okay. They really just didn't do anything for me. Um, I mean, they wasn't bad, but I, I can't say that I'm in love uh, with the main actor. Her, na her name is uh, Hera uh, Hilmer. She played Hester Shaw. I can't say that I I'm in love with her. I can't say that, you know, Robert Shishan, who played Tom Nitsworthy, I can't say that, you know, he was a favorite character of mine. Uh, one of the gripes that I have in this movie is the film was two hours and eight minutes long. And I wasn't sitting there just saying to myself, okay, man, this is a long film. When is it going to end? I want to go home. But there was a sequel. There was a character that they introduced in this film by the name of Shriek. 
And I either wanted more from that character and more of his backstory, but or nothing at all. I feel that they could have either cut that out of the film completely and they would have saved time, at least a good 20 minutes, or they should have gave us more. I was disappointed with the way they introduced. I mean, I like the way they introduced this character, but the ending, you know, I was just kind of saying to myself, okay, what was the point of that? You know, I'm, I'm just a little annoyed. The action sequences in this film was great with the different cities trying to compete with themselves. Uh, it was something that I've never seen before. Cities battling cities. I mean, how do you do that? You know, one pe person on the attack, one person in the defense, things like that, scavenging, you know, um, you know, dog chases and things. It, it, it was, I don't know. It was it was an experience that I've never seen before. Something that you would want to see on the big screen. Um, it is something that I, I would recommend. Just a while ago, I talked about that there were some characters in this film that I was not in love with. There were a group of characters towards the end, which I don't know. that I can't remember the name of the group, but I did like them. They were a powerful unit. They worked as one. They were just on code no matter what. I mean, they knew what to do without even having to say it to each other. And I, I, I do like that. It can become a little frustrating because the more I think about it, the more I think about how the plot kind of falls apart towards the end. I mean, you have this film where visually you're doing things that have never been done before. I have these wide shots, these these giant sets, these giant cities moving on wheels, flying in the air. But then when it comes down to MacGuffin, you're just saying to yourself as an audience member, you had this device this whole time and you didn't notice it. I mean, in this post-apocalyptic world where it's thousand years in the future, 15 years in the future, where all technology has been destroyed, but you find this one piece right here that solves everything, it's just a little hard to believe. I still enjoyed the film, but at the same time, while you're concentrating on all these big epic scenes, but not paying attention to the little things, um, like I said, it can be frustrating. So if I were to rate Mortal Engines out of a 1 out of 10, I'm still going to give it a passing grade because I enjoyed it. But, you know, I'm not going to, um, of course, rave on it. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Yes, a 6.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion for Mortal Engines. Have you seen Mortal Engines or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and I made it very easy by providing links to all that down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning into my opinion slash review for Mortal Engines. And also, this is produced by um, Peter Jackson, who did Lord of the Rings, and he did the screenplay. So forgive me for leaving it out. Before you go, don't forget to always chase your dreams, because I'm chasing mine. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.